Welcome back to The Deep Cut on RFN. I'm Taryn Smits. Pride and Prejudice. Little needs to be said of this literary classic. It was issued from the mighty pen of the imitable Jane Austen and takes place amidst the great regency of Great Britain. It tells the story of a courageous yet conflicted young woman torn between the callings of the heart and those of the broader culture. Our discussion today takes aim at the acknowledged masterpiece because production is about to begin on the first legitimate cinematic adaptation of the novel since 2005. The story will be brought to the big screen in 2022, and to elucidate the details of the undertaking, I'm speaking now with Jane Austen Entertainment President Chris Dysart. Chris, I thank you for joining us today. It's it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, well, actually, Chris, we did a quite extensive interview last year about uh, Casablanca. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Anyway, my uh, audience had some concerns about your direction with Casablanca, and I hope that uh, you won't. Ha- they won't have. The yeah, same there's con- look. There's 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 always going to be controversy on the internet. There's always going to be controversy out there for some of the old fans who can't let let go of a new direction. But first and foremost, I just want to say we're making this thing for the fans, but we want to expand. Right. Pride and Prejudice to a whole new demographic. Now, see, that's where I get a little uh, concerned in the, in the hairs in the back of my neck stand right. up because. So there's been what a Pride and Prejudice movie. There's been a Pride and Prejudice series. Yes, very loyal to the, the source material. Very loyal to the source material, and we're not we're not saying that we're not loyal to the source material, but we're just trying to read the in between lines. That's a that's a dangerous game. As I'm told, you must be able to uh, first read the lines before you read between them. Absolutely, and that's why we're we're. We're making a Jane Austen for 2022. And let me just, if you just give me a moment, let you explain kind of what we're doing here. There's a lot of richness in Pride and Prejudice, and we are going to mine it for all it's worth, if you will. And what I mean by that is looking at the backdrop. And what's the backdrop? Think about this for a moment. What is the backdrop of Pride and Prejudice? What What is the setting? Ah, uh, well, let me answer that question. Um, well, the setting is, and think about this, this may blow your mind, but this is the British Empire at its height. The sun didn't set on the British Empire. So you've got this raging mm. empire encroaching on other, well, what, what do empires do, right? They, they, they quell, they, 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 they quell rebellion, they, they push into new territories. And we wanted to have that political, as today we're, we're a political people. And listen, we don't have a lot of time, so I just want to be, be honest with you. The fans are going to be really pleased because all of their favorite subs are going to be there. There's going to be romance. There's going to be intrigue. There's going to be, you know, longing and forlorning and, and all that's going to be there. And, but we're, we're going to take, uh, the Bennett character to the next level. We see uh, her. Elizabeth Bennett, you mean? Yes. And we see the main character as somebody who is yearning for more, right? Um, mm. she doesn't know that Darcy, right? So they, they try, people try to pigeonhole her. She, all she is is she's just some, uh, farmhand, right? So. Um. It, uh, so it's a little bit more than that, and, and we, 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 we're going to take Darcy. He's dashing. He's amazing. Um, we're going to play up the Darcy character. I mean, he's roguish. Uh, he's a I don't know. He's you know, uh, a scruffy. The guy is is someone that obviously I think will bring in uh, an audience of a different sort, and kind of, we'll just kind of get some of his roguish behavior. You know, a little bit wild. Remember, because the empire is encroaching in the back. Excuse me, the empire. Let, let's back up a pace here. No, wait, wait, before we back up a pace, let me just let's let's look. We've got we've got we've got all the, the scenes that people love, right? Everyone, the, the meeting of uh, what's that name? The Bingley, the Bingley uh, Estate, uh, right? Charles, yes, right. So they're they're at the cantina and they're 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 meeting for the first time. And at the, I'm sorry, at the what? Uh, and then you have got the George uh, Wickham character, right? I'm uh, thinking about this is a military guy that uh, look. He comes in to the set and he takes the main characters and what does he do? He blows up their world. But he does it with what? With lies, what if it blew up her life with a laser? It's surreal. It's so. We're, we're, I'm. I'm not going to lie. I don't think that the audience for this film is where you think it's at. Um, and so we wanted to explore some of the room that Austin let us explore, and really bring that to the forefront. Now I, I see your face, and I, I do see some shock. And so what we <clears> want to do is listen. I got my guy, um, Derek uh, Denning. And Derek has, he's probably, he's, he's the guy who, pulled, who I pulled in to really be uh, head of our story group, because we're looking to take kind of an Austin universe, some of her other works we think were interconnected. Who's to say that 
Um, these things weren't happening simultaneously. This was in a world where there was some interplay. In fact, there are some overlapping characters. And, and so we do feel there was a Jane Austen universe that, that, that we can explore if we can do this uh, Pride and Prejudice trilogy correct. So let me get him on the line. You think you can give him a ring and um, you know, get him on, on the line and then um, he can kind of break down because, look, he's the expert. He's the one who's going to make sure that it makes sense for the fans. Whereas my job, of course, is to make it for everybody. So if we can get him on the line, I think we can... All right. We are, we are reaching out to Mr. Derek Denning, the so-called Jane Austen expert. Now, when you say so-called, I want you to say who Denning is. Okay? This is a guy who loves all the works of Austen. He, he, remember, he worked at the company before I took over as uh, president. This is the guy. Okay. All right. Well, he's on the line. Uh, Mr. D- Mr. Denning. Well, listen, I was explaining to him about the cantina scene and uh, explaining to them, look, t- talk to him. Tell them, you know, tell them what you know. You're the aficionado. The cantina scene. Well, uh, the laser, the cantina scene. A lot of people think that um, Greedo actually shot first in that scene. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. We're talking about Bennett, and we're talking about um, uh, Darcy. Go, go ahead. Bevan Darcy. All right. Let me. Okay. Thank you. Let's call. Uh, let's call my other my my other story group guy. Um, he's the one. He's the one that I think is going to really um, open this thing wide open. Uh, I, I, and again, I, I appreciate you, you having me here, and I, I, I we appreciate the fans at um, Austin Jane Austen um, Entertainment. All right, so uh, let's get the other guy on here. This is our, our special effects wizard, and he is a part of our story group. And I think nobody loves um, uh, Jane the works of, of Jane Austen more than him. Um, uh, this is uh, Billy. Uh, President, uh, Billy, are you there? Well, um, well, there's some fans here that are really con- kind of confused um, by our story group. Uh, uh, Derek came in here and said some things they shouldn't have. Uh, just tell them about uh, the characters and kind of what they mean to the fans and that we're staying true to the spirit. And um, you're an aficionado. You you, you studied the, the works of um, what a classic. And, 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 and I just want people to know that, look, I, I'm not an expert. I may have taken over the studio as the president, but I think you can speak authoritatively and really let them know how great this, how how great it's going to be, and that we're going to really please the fans. So if you just can say a word or two of some of the things that we're going to be doing to make the fans feel good, uh, just let us know. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be. Uh, it, it's going to be exactly what what the fans want. Right. You know. And give I mean, me. You're going to have a, a lot of action, a lot of lasers. And it's going to be the cantina for sure. Yeah. Um, where do you suppose you'll fit these lasers uh, into the plot? Well, you know, I, I would imagine that some of the vessels are going to have lasers. No, well, hold on. Look, wait a minute. The, no, the, w- this isn't fucked. Uh, this is what's best for the Austin verse. The Austin verse. Oh yeah, we've got the Austin verse, and uh, can you imagine the great thing about that? We're going to be doing Northern Ham, uh, North, uh, the, the, the down, Downtown Abbey, or Northern Abbey. And of course, you've got the Emma. Emma's going to be. <laughs> we're thinking about doing like the like the Matrix thing. Emma has like needles and shit like that. Can you imagine that? We're going to fucking walk with Jane Austen. Just like these fucking things. I know what the fans want. What they want is explosions and lasers.